What's going on? It's Suck and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the brand new M2 powered 11 inch iPad Air. This is a reminder that we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified when any of my new up and coming videos go live. But without any further ado, Let's hit the titles. So the first series of tests which I ran on this brand new iPad come from Geekbench. The first of these being the Geekbench 6 application and more specifically the CPU test. Now when running this specific test I got a single core score of 2607 along with a multi-core score of 9995. I also ran the Geekbench 6 Metal Compute Test and when running this test I got a score of 41,726. The next test which I ran on this iPad Air once again comes from Geekbench however this time to test their machine learning performance of this iPad Air. So when running Geekbench ML I got a CPU score of 3467 along with a GPU score of 4670 and when it comes to testing the neural engine in the M2 on this iPad Air I got a core ML score of 6891. I think the interesting thing to take note of here is when it comes to testing the neural engine in the M2 iPad Pro, it scored 3140. However, when it comes to testing the M2 in this iPad Air, it scored 6891, which is around a 75% increase in performance. The next benchmarking application which I ran on this iPad Air was GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity both on and off screen. Now in the interest of saving some time I have calculated the average for each of these categories but as always I will show you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was an average frame rate of 142.62 frames per second, whereas for the lower level intensive tasks, I got an average frame rate of 306.19 frames per second. I then ran a number of different graphics tests from 3D Mark, and I started off with the wildlife test, and as I had expected, it maxed out this score, with it averaging 60 frames per second. So I then ran the wildlife stress test and when it comes to running this test the best score it achieved was 10,021 with the lowest score being 10,018. And so it seems that the M2 chip in this iPad Air is performing fairly well even under stress. I then ran the wildlife extreme test and when it comes to running this test it scored 4468 with it now averaging a frame rate of 26.7 frames per second. I then ran the wildlife extreme stress test and when running this test the best score it achieved was 4418 with its lowest being 3131. So this was quite disappointing as the best score achieved with the 13 inch iPad Air which has the same M2 chip was 5321. So there's quite a substantial difference between the 11 inch and the 13 inch and so I would assume that due to the larger chassis size of the 13 inch iPad Air it has more space to dissipate heat. I then ran the Solar Bay test and it scored 5,122 with it averaging a frame rate of 19.5 frames per second. And the slightly concerning thing here is that this frame rate is much lower than the 26 frames per second that we see with the 13 inch M2 iPad Air. And things are no different when it comes to the Solar Bay stress test with the 11 inch coming in with a best score of 4,951 with its lowest score being 4,292 compared to the 13 inch which has a best score of over 6,600. So it's clear to see that the 11 inch iPad Air is either thermally constrained or is being artificially limited by software. I then exported a 4K video project through iMovie and when exporting this video project it took 3 minutes and 42 seconds to export. 
I then exported the same video project but this time through Final Cut Pro and when exporting as a full HD project it completed it in 56 seconds. However when exporting the project as a 4K video it took 2 minutes and 53 seconds to export. I also ran a Wi-Fi speed test and when running this test I got Wi-Fi download speeds of 534 megabits per second with upload speeds of 100 megabits per second. I wanted to then test the storage in this iPad Air so I then ran a disk speed test from Jazz, the Jazz disk speed test. Now when running this test I got sequential write speeds of 944.65 megabytes per second with sequential read speeds of 1630.57 megabytes per second. It also got random write speeds of 22.41 megabytes per second with random read speeds of 46.01 megabytes per second. I then ran the Antutu graphics benchmark and when running this specific test, it got a score of 1,687,025. I also ran the Antutu storage speed test and when running this test I got sequential read speeds of 899.6 megabytes per second with sequential write speeds of 1131.6 megabytes per second. With this test I got random read speeds of 167 megabytes per second with random write speeds of 45.7 megabytes per second. I also ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and when running this test I got a score of 78,564. Also when using Adobe Lightroom it took 1 minute and 34 seconds to export 100 GH5 raw images. I also ran the Affinity Photo benchmark and with this I got a vector multi CPU score of 2,637. I also got a raster multi CPU score of 742 which gives us a combined multi CPU score of 505. So that will be it for today's video, I will be uploading a number of videos over the coming days and weeks comparing this iPad to its predecessors and other models. So be sure to subscribe smacking that bell to be notified when any of those videos go live. If you'd like to see which videos I'm currently working on then be sure to go and follow me over on X and Instagram. I'll leave it linked down below in this video description. Once again thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.